Hello everyone and welcome to Administrator Studios. Let me show you the next part. Now in this part, what we'll pretty much do is to create a server. So it's a simple server, simple server that we'll create. So I was looking at it in the examples and I found this JSON server. So what we'll do is we have our data already in form of JSON structure, right? So we'll create a JSON server, host our JSON file there, and fetch this data using the Angular function. So now this will mimic a scenario wherein we are actually fetching data from the server. So how to install JSON server? Simply npi install JSON server. But I'm going to do it globally. So I've created a separate folder. I'm going to run this as a separate server altogether. So let's do this. npm install. This is globally JSON server. So I want to be able to install it from every other location. So while this is happening, let's understand how this works. So I need to create a database, either database.json or database.json5. This is a new format which you can learn about. Now, this is a sample structure. Let's see how JSON5 looks like. So our data is pretty much in this format rather than this. Okay, so let's use JSON5. So back to our code. Let's create this JSON5 file. We'll go to source, we'll go to app, and under services, we'll go to config service. Let's copy this configuration. Now, this is the complete data that we have for this website. Control N, Control V. Now, let's get rid of this and a closing curly braces and a starting curly braces. Uh, let's get rid of this information here. So, we are declaring a configuration item. So, this is a configuration item. And everything here now under configuration is a array and these are separate line items within this array so let's save this save as we'll go to okay enter AD studio let's create DB in this db let me save this file as db.json5 okay and I'll select all files okay db.json5 but we have double quotes here so let's replace all the double quotes with single code Okay, I think this should work. Okay, let's see if we have any error. Okay, let's save this. Now this file is saved. It's time for us to see if, okay, server is installed. Let's run the server. So in order to run, we have npx JSON server. So we are in the DB folder already, npx JSON server, but our file name is five. Let's see if we have an error. Oh, works good so far. Let's see, how does it look like? So it shows configuration. If I go to configuration, I have all the data that we pasted. 
let's go to id1 slash one so it shows just for this id okay now under one i have further id number one so it does not work at the second level so until first level we are good enough just to demonstrate how we are dealing with data okay and if I go to the documentation here it shows that we can do get post get means we can get the data get with ID we can get the specific data we can same to similar you do post and put uh, HTTP request okay so these conditions are also applicable we can do these conditions start and limit page page number nested embedded delete I mean so much for a small little application but still okay now with this part done this is going to be our address for our API localhost 3000 configuration let's go back to our code you can close this and I'm not deleting this configuration item as yet but let me declare a new variable so we'll call it string API or rather directly API URL equals to okay so this is going to be API API URL and we are not changing everything drastically let's do it step by step now we already have two functions called get all pages so this needs to be updated so now the thing here that we need to understand when we are sending a request to a server there are three ways which we do it Yes, there are more than one way we can do that. So, uh, let me write here only. We can use promise. Hmm? We can use observable, which is a good way to do things because every time, I mean, it's the recommended way. Promises are also there. And then there is X. Uh, X HTTP HTML request type so this is not X I'm forgetting the name but this is again the default type of request that HTTP used to send request to server so here uh, we can look at promise but let's do observable which is the best way to do things in angular okay now when we use observable we need observable here okay and we are also going to use HTTP client in our applications so first we need to let our application know that we are going to make use of this so for that as I told you earlier when we have a ng module based setup we declare a new ng module but here we are going to import things here in the main .ts so I'm going to import provide HTTP client from HTTP and now we have two things bootstrap application which takes two input but this is the based application name this is the main component and the application configuration which we add a later on this is the service now there can be more than one provider so we can include that as an as a separate object so let's do this
Now, when I was looking at the documentation, it was a recommended way that we can use with fetch. So with fetch utilizes the default API inbuilt into browsers that is called fetch API, which has much better uh, usage and it has much better control and functions as compared to the default method that browser used to have. Now, when I be saved with, with fetch, it has already added here. Now, one thing I realized in the previous code, some of the code was still working, but we never included the roots actually. So let's root include the root provider also here. So we'll import the roots. So these are the roots that we created app.roots here, this file. So I'm root importing these files and we need a provider for roots. So let's directly add the provider here provide router and within this I need to mention the routes that we have for our application so we are done we are not using app config still we'll be able to access everything so here pretty much we wanted to list down all the providers this is done uh, so now my application has access to HTTP client and routes for sure. Now let's go to config service again. We have our API URL defined. And now let's do a fetch request. Now, as I said, we are going to make use of observable and we are going to make use of HTTP. So let's call those things here first. So HTTP client and HTTP headers. Okay, headers will allow me to define the application type. So let's define that application type. So I can define it here. Headers equals to new HTTP headers. Now I'll pass on a function type. So headers, new HTTP header, content type application, JSON. Okay, so let's make this HTTP available to our class HTTP. And this is of type HTTP client. Now we have passed it on, passed on this as a parameter to constructor. Now it is available. Now I have a standard function that I generally use for error handling, which we'll use here. Now we need to import observable import once you start practicing observable it will be far much easy for you to make use of it and let's you import off okay and we need filter
so we need these three things we are done with here now get all pages uncodable reach code detected unreachable code detected okay let's make it reachable so we have closed this error handling function here now what it does is we can further extend that so that's why I've mentioned to, to send the error to remote logging server so every time there is an event we'll get to know what kind of event has happened now let's quickly come to this and we'll update this function let's comment this out and let's call return this dot API URL now API URL is what we want to get so this dot HTTP dot get get is the function which we want to use now what do we want to get get uh, API URL so simply fetch this API URL and now you see already showing an error it shows that you have an observable object but you are using configuration item as the return so we have to change this to an observable now what an observable is nothing but an item which can continuously be monitored it could be an array which is the most commonly is the case so here we have saying that this is going to return an configuration item array which is an observable so return type observable item which is not assignable to type or visible configuration item is assignable to very few other types to do any or type instead okay so let's fix this so what we are trying to get here is so let's define the type here we are saying you return config item array to us array to us so this is now fixed so it's going to return configuration ID. so return type is same and what we are getting is also the same but sometime it might return empty so there could be errors so in order to take care of that situation let's return a blank object so either it will get this data or we'll have this blank object similarly we can update this one okay let's copy this i'm commenting this out and again this time we are just going to get one configuration item so let's okay control set market observable So observable configuration item let's get rid of undefined we don't want to have this now let's return return this dot stdp dot get config item and we want this dot api url and now we want to filter this with this api url so what we do in an observable is either we use map map is an operator which transform all the items in that array okay all the items in that array and then whatever transformation we want to apply let's say we want to square something we want to multiply those things but we if you want to do multiple operations we use something called pipe so with pipe you can actually put multiple things so here we are going to use filter so let's copy what we let's paste what we copied so i want to do filter what we want to filter the configuration item with configuration item name and it should match the page name which is there in this parameter so this is our function 
it is going to return to me a configuration item so which is okay now let's add another function so you must have seen functions with ID as one of the parameter so we can do that simply by using the backtick okay using the ticks sorry uh, tick here and here use this within parenthesis and with a prefix dollar and then slash okay let's call it ID and dollar no we do not have this variable as yet let's name this function as get all sorry get page by ID and let's take a number ID as the parameter okay cannot find name ID type ID unresolved oh wait the parameter name first and then the type okay now this is fixed observable configuration item return this configuration now here again it will not return an array it will rather return a configuration item same will make changes here and this dot api url id simple as that so our service part is done now let's make this change in and this time we are going to make use of this particular function okay so let's start with um, head header okay so here in this header we already have a header variable which is config item or undefined In constructor we are calling this function this dot header equals this dot config service dot get page by name header so instead of get page by name we want get page by ID and let's give the ID for header okay I need to check what is the ID okay one is about four four is header we have title description URL URL actually is description okay let's update this to file open file let's go to DB. okay here so let's change this to description this URL is actually description and let's define URL here and I'll give my website's address let me start in no let's make it home so it will automatically redirect you to the home page okay keeping it simple and if I refresh here does it work no because we are reading this file so let's save and close this now will it work I may have to restart the server okay let's do this once again okay just now we have the updated text and everything and let's call it in our code so we need IDS for now this that header it shows that this is an observable and missing the following properties configuration item because what we are going to get from there is an observable and in order to read observable we need to subscribe for the updates and changes so cut this from here okay or maybe let's leave it as it is let's comment this out okay I'll make the original changes and I'm just commenting let's continue our function from the next line this dot 
config service dot get pages by id id four dot subscribe and once you subscribe what do you get you get response response and for this response we want this response okay this dot header equals to this dot response so we now want to assign this header to response and let's do a console dot log okay response response okay I'm not sure why it is giving this error console dot log close this we'll do the testing later I'm not sure why it is giving such a problem should not be but let's say test this one so we have set up everything here let's see if we need to make any changes it's already configuration item it is undefined let's go to HTML do we have an error here so title description but text URL okay looks good to me let's go to our website and see okay do we have an error we have an error about about dot component but we are in home right so home works okay let's check the errors so in the console we do not have an error but if I'll click any other link but this is not showing updated and we do not okay let's stop and run this once again oh we have bundle of errors here this dot footer this dot client this dot service so similar kind of changes are now required to be made in all these and let's do this so header is done we'll go to header component I'll copy this much and we just need to change the page ID and let me see if there is anything else which needs a change no I think this is good so let's go about okay so I'm not this start about okay and this is first let go to the second one client client s yes. clients and number two let's go to footer I'll make the changes to the ID well let's do it in sequence as of now footer uh, gallery I'm sure I'm incorrectly mentioning the iris but it's okay you can change this later uh, five or maybe let's go to this page go to configuration directly so one is about second is client gallery is third gallery is third okay I'll close this head component main dot ts footer what is for footer header is for footer is 8 actually so footer is 8 let's close footer 
and let's go to navigation we don't have anything not found we don't have anything pricing so in pricing component uh, one of the user responded and that's a fact that I was speaking a little low my voice was little low so I made some corrections now and the reason I speak a little low at this moment of time if you see it's already 145 everybody's sleeping at my home I'm just trying to complete this tutorial so that you can follow okay configuration is done okay number I have to change surprising so let's keep it five why is it five pricing is yeah five then comes services so copying this saving this services services and let's change it to six and finally okay we got social and testimonial testimonial must be seven Footer is 8 and social is 9. Okay. And finally, social. See, you can customize, you can hard code at some areas and you can drill down to, a, to the level of a button. That you can turn a button into a component with some parameters that can also be done it should match your level of understanding and complexity that you can manage so we pretty much made changes to all of them and let's see how does it look like it has created a bundle successfully let me just stop and just to be sure serve it again okay this looks good coming back to our home page oh yes it's reloading 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 okay still creating the bundle so so far we created we installed a server and we hosted some data we were able to run the server we updated our service service in angular and updated all the components and we have successfully fetched data from this server now let it build and we'll be able to verify if everything's working properly or not so this is a good way when you are working as an angular developer you are pretty much working on the front end you are free to incorporate hard-coded data or you can demonstrate a POC like this proof of concept like this that this is how your application is going to work okay let's see looks good to me let's see if we have any errors here so far so good there is no error okay Let's check. This URLs are also working properly. Okay. All good so far and so good. So that's all for this video. And in the subsequent video, we'll incorporate some new features within these applications so now I believe you have a fair idea on how to turn an HTML template into an angular application and how to do routing and post that you have done routing how to incorporate a service which can provide input for your application
it could be data it could be calculations it could be anything else that you want to incorporate which remains to be common for your entire application so that's one thing that you can do and now if you have seen wordpress applications and themes you find that uh, the application itself gives you many options to do modifications but we need to understand one thing wordpress is based on php which is a server side language that means it can make modifications to the files on the server but when we deal with angular it is just the front end it's allowed to run within the browser but not allowed to make any changes to the actual set of files so if you are willing to host just a static uh, website like this maybe a profile website or something this is what we are building so we are preparing a profile website pretty much highlighting what the services are and everything around it but even then we need some small little functionality let's say we want our clients to be able to send us emails so how to do that be able to send emails and subscribe to our newsletter okay so these two things are something that i'll try to incorporate now okay and then this is all what you need to get started with your own website in angular that's all that i have to show but in the subsequent videos these are all optional videos i would talk more about angular and some of the specific features let's say if you want to implement a blog how would you do that if you want to implement some functionality like paginations how to do that if you want to create a profile page for a user how to do that how to configure login in angular so it's just all about learning and then you're free to make choices on what you want to implement what you want to skip that's all for now it's already too late so good night everyone see you in the next video bye bye